drum tight containers is designing an open top square based rectangular box that will have a volume of 500 cubic inches. What dimensions will minimize surface area? What is the minimum surface area? So let me draw something, okay? So the square, the, the base has to be square. So I'm gonna draw a square sideways. So let's say this is a square in three dimensions, okay? And then I will have height. This is a box coming down. See what I'm trying to do here, right? So, and then I'll draw some dotted line, okay? So, like dotted line right here, dotted line right there. Okay, so that's my sketch, okay? Um, that looks good. All right, so we know this is a square in the bottom, so I'll try to put some dimensions here, okay? How about I say X for the side length? So if that's X, guess what else is X? This is a square, so other side is X, this side is X, and that side is also X, right? Um, I'm not gonna mark all of it, okay? Let me just put, whoopsies, let me just put X is like this, okay? Um, what else do we know? They really didn't give us much information, right? Um, I will call the height of this container H. Okay, so I'll say from the top to the bottom, H. Okay, so what's the volume of a rectangular prism? Um, the volume is going to be length times width times height. Right? Here, the length and width is x times x. See? We're going to have this orange base h number of times. We're like, imagine stacking up that square in h height. And that's going to be the volume of this rectangular prism. So I will say the volume is equal to x times x times height and they did give us that this volume is what in this problem 500 so i'll put 500 on the left side okay all right so what we got is 500 equals x squared times h now i'm going to solve this for h the height by dividing both sides by x squared. Look, if I divide both sides by x squared, I will get that height of this box needs to be 500 divided by x squared. So I keep that there, okay? So that will be useful. Now what we are trying to do is minimize the surface area of this box. So all this work that I've done so far, that's involving volume formula. I now need to go and write the surface area formula. So I'll do that. Surface area, and I'll do that in green, okay? So imagine opening this up, okay? Um, I'll try to draw a net here, okay? So you will have your, bo uh, your square bottom, right but you'll have the side let me try to draw it right here okay so and the prism has four sides right so one side two side and uh, side number three and the, oh, sorry, in this water, this is too, too long. Okay, let me try to erase some of these. Maybe not that much, yep. Yeah. Okay, that's good. So imagine folding this, okay? If you fold this, we cut this and fold it, you will get an open top box that looks just like that, right? So that's what I try to draw because I want to figure out the surface area formula with you, okay? So look, this side is x. 
okay? And this side is x. So area of this little square base is equal to x squared, right? Because x times x is x squared. So I got the area of this green square, which is x squared. Now what I want to do is I want to find the area of this big rectangle, okay? Because my goal is to add those two green shaded areas together. That will be the surface area of this box, okay? Now, remember the height of this box is going to be h, right? Oopsies. The height is going to be h. Um, notice that we have um, a square base. So all four sides are equal here, which means if, hold on a second, if this side is x and this side, when we fold it, it's going to be that side right there, right? So that's also x, okay? If I fold this, you notice how this side will overlap with this side, which is also x. So we have another x here. And if you fold this, this side will be glued to this side, right? So that third, fourth side is also x. So how many x's do we have so far? One, two, three, four. So this entire length is going to be 4x. Four 4x. Four okay. So Let's find the area of this light green piece, okay? Uh, and we call this lateral area, lateral area. Okay, that's gonna be 4x times h, right? And the base area, I'll call it the base area, okay, equals x squared. So the total surface area, is equal to those two added together. 4x times h plus x squared. Now, this formula, surface area, has two variables, x and h. Now, remember what h is. I'm gonna go copy what we got so far. Like, we got, we said that h is equal to 500 divided by x squared, right? So we're going to substitute this h into the surface area formula. Hold on. So let's do a substitution and rewrite the surface area formula. Surface area formula in terms of x, just one variable x, is equal to 4x times instead of h this fraction and what else we have to add this x squared right x squared now let's simplify this okay surface area is equal to now i'm going to multiply this four times 500 that's going to be 2000 right now look we're multiplying x divided by x squared, right? x over x squared. You notice the denominator has one more x, so we're going to write it as over x. But look, I want to rewrite this. I don't want to put x in the bottom of the fraction. So instead of writing 2,000 over x, guess what? I'm going to say 2,000 times x to the negative first power. How did I get this x to the negative first power? Look, if you have x to the first power divided by x squared, you have to do 1 minus 2 to get an exponent of negative 1. And then I'll bring this down plus x squared. Now we finally got the surface area formula. So we want to minimize this. That's what we are doing, uh, you know, we were asked to do in the very beginning of this problem. So they want us to find the point where this surface area will be minimized, okay? So, yeah, I need some more room here. I'm gonna add another page. So to find the point, um, the x value that will minimize the surface area, 
we're going to find the critical value, okay? Because that's where minimum or relative minimum or relative maximum will happen. So let's take the derivative and set it equal to zero. The derivative of the surface area with respect to x is negative 2,000 times x to the negative second power plus 2x. Now let us set this equal to zero to solve for a critical value. Okay, I'm going to zoom out and then just show you this much. Now, there are different ways to solve this, but how would we solve this? Let's see. Um, I'm thinking. All right. I may try to put the first term in a fraction format so that I can see what's going on real quick. Okay. So I'll say negative 2,000 over x squared plus 2x. Um, okay, okay. I would like to do something to both sides so that the x is not in the bottom of the fraction. Look, here's what I'm thinking. I would like to multiply both sides by x squared. Okay, I'll multiply both sides by x squared. If I do that, the left side is just 0. But the reason I'm doing that is because when I distribute this x squared, what happened to this x squared that's in the bottom of the fraction? That's gone, right? So I just have negative 2,000 coming off of that fraction. And look, if I do 2x times x squared, um, that's going to be 2 times x squared times x, right? So I will write that as 2 times x to the what power? 2 plus 1 will give me 3. All right, so that's what I got so far. I'm going to add 2,000 to both sides. I'm just moving that negative 2,000 to the left. So I have just this coming down. 2,000 is gone. I will divide both sides by 2 now. Divide by 2, divide by 2. So 1,000 equals x cubed. Now to get x, I will take cube root of both sides. Cube root of 1,000 is 10. So I got a critical value, x equals 10. Now my question is, this is a critical value, but how do we know if this is where absolute, you know, relative maximum or relative minimum happens? Well, we don't know that just yet, right? So what we will perform is the second derivative test. So remember, if you plug in that x value into the second derivative, depending on the sign of the second derivative, we'll be able to tell if this is a relative maximum or relative minimum. So did we ever find the second derivative? Well, not just yet. But we do have the first derivative. So let me do get this line. Remember that was the first derivative. I'll look at that orange line and uh, that yellow line and come up with the second derivative. What is s double prime of x? Okay, take the derivative of that yellow box. Okay, that will be 4,000 x to the negative third power plus 2, right? Plug in that critical value that we just got. What was that x value that we got? 10. So you're going to plug in that 10 into the second derivative to get the sign of it, okay? So that will be 4,000 divided by 10 to the third power plus 3, a uh, plus 2, right? So what's that? That's 4,000 divided by 1,000 plus 2. That is 4 plus 2, which is a positive number. This is a positive number. Now, we just saw that the second derivative, when we plug in x equals 10, is a positive value. 
When that second derivative comes out to be positive, what we know is x equals 10 is where relative minimum happens. Okay, so that is the second derivative test. You find the second derivative, you plug in that x value, that critical value. If that comes out to be a positive number bigger than zero, then we have uh, that this value is where relative minimum happens. So we got it. Um, they wanted us to minimize. Okay, so we did our little second derivative test to confirm that. When x is equal to 10, we have a minimum surface uh, area. So I'll go back up here and try to fill in some blanks, okay? Um, what was x in my picture? x was the base length and width, right? We just got that x is 10 inches. So um, the dimension of this box is 10 by 10 by, oh, I don't know what that height is, so let's find that. So the dimension is 10 by 10 by, let's go find that third height, okay? Now remember we have a height function. Height is 500 divided by that x squared. Remember, x just came out to be 10. So we'll do 100, 500 divided by 10 squared, which is 500 divided by 100. So height is 5. All right. So the dimension of this box is 10 by 10 by 5. So I'll say length of one side of the base is 10 inches. Height of the box is 5 inches. Now if you multiply them, you will get 10 times 10 times 5 equal 500. So we got the volume of 500, but they want the minimum surface area. So we got to go find the surface area function formula. I mean, we can plug it in here. Why not? I can plug it in here, or you can plug it back into this, uh, this surface area. But I'll just do it over here, okay? I'll, I'll use my net here, okay? Um, the surface area function that we got was surface area was uh -oh, 4 times x times height plus x squared. I just copied this down, okay? Let's plug in everything, okay? Uh, we know x was 10. I remember x was 10. Remember the height was 5 and the base area is 10 squared. So I just need to do this. Um, this first part is going to be 40 times 5, which is 200. And this part is 10 squared, that is 100. So the surface area comes out to be 300, but this is area, so the unit better be inches squared. Okay, so let's say that the minimum surface area is 300 square inches okay so let me zoom out so that you can see the the big flow of this so we started with the volume formula try to rewrite that volume formula for h okay um and then we got the surface area formula we minimized we found the critical value did a little second derivative test to really confirm that that's where the minimum happens and once we got that confirmed, we found the dimension of this box, okay? The length and, you know, length of the size and the height, and finally found the surface area of this, okay?